Gavin Martin here from Cornerstone Wealth, who I'm going to be presenting tonight's session on superannuation. And it's Peter Murphy, the CEO of Christian Super, who's just going to introduce the session, but he's he's at the football tonight, so uh, that's what you can hear in the, in the background. Okay, Gav, well, I'll hand it over to you, and I'll uh, get back to the football game, and uh, hope that you guys have a good, ga have a, have a good uh, night tonight. God bless you guys. Thanks, Pete. Enjoy the football. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, that was uh, Peter Murphy. Thanks for uh, bearing with the uh, the noise in the background of the football there, and uh, thanks for attending. One thing just to note is that tonight's presentation is a general advice only. Um, and we don't know your personal circumstances, um, and uh, yeah, please don't take tonight's um, content as personal advice. Uh, it is is general advice only. If you do want personal advice, uh, then this is the process that we, we can take you through. So we uh, request that you uh, complete a questionnaire for us, a brief four-page questionnaire. Then we meet with you for an initial consultation. That's about understanding your goals, um, looking at where you currently are, and then looking at the range of options uh, that, that are available to you and the pros and cons of those options. Now, in that meeting as well, it's general advice. Um, when we pro uh, provide personal advice we need to provide that in writing and that's this next stage if we go down that stage then we'll um, present it to you another meeting we can help you implement it and provide ongoing advice so that's just to give you an idea of how the um, personal advice um, process works now getting into the meat of the uh, session tonight is uh, just asking well what is superannuation and it's effectively one of the three pillars of um, retirement funding. And Australia is reasonably well reputed around the world as a, a good system of providing for retirement. I know there's um, all, often questions about have we got sufficient funding for our retirement, but uh, in the world scheme of things, we're in a reasonable uh, position. Uh, but the three sources of funding for retirement are, um, firstly, your superannuation, uh, secondly, the age pension, which is provided by the government. And then thirdly, your own savings. And so what we're going to focus on tonight is superannuation. And we can touch on what it is and also what it's not. So what it is, is a tax-effective structure to save for retirement. It's not actually an investment in itself. So some people assume that uh, my super went down and, and, and that's a reasonable way to actually um, talk about it, my super went down and my super went up, but it's actually the investments within your super that have gone up and down. Uh, your superannuation is really just a tax structure in which to hold investments, and those investments can be a range of things. Uh, it's compulsory for employers to contribute 9% of your salary to uh, super. The government's looking at increasing that over the next few years to up to 12%, but it's got to get through legislation first. Uh, it's regulated to ensure that it's used for retirement purposes only. So uh, a number, I think it was a question about using your superannuation to buy your home that you want to live in. Well, you can't use it for that because it's for retirement purposes only or to support your retirement only. You can later on, if you want to, draw your money out of super and use it to pay for a home. But the main purpose is to provide for your re retirement. So there's a sole purpose test there. Uh, it's regularly modified, so there's there's been over, I think, 9,000 changes to the superannuation law since it was brought in back in 1992 uh, or, or thereabouts, and uh, so there's massive amounts of changes going on, and that's a risk. There's a legislative risk there that if you've planned for something and then they change the rules, uh, then that's a definite risk uh, that it might be change in a way that's disadvantageous to you. Uh, but one of the beauties about superannuation generally is that, as per this last point on the slide here, it's generally uh, modified, it's not generally modified retrospectively. Uh, so what happens is that changes to it are made into the future. And so if you've got plans in place already or if you've got um, your structures in place already, it's generally... Um, not affected, but it's the things that it, they plan out into the future. Uh, so that's a, whilst there's legislative risk with super, um, the changes happen generally um, uh, into the future as opposed to retrospectively. Um, and the other thing to note is that it's your money. Uh, it's not the government's money. Uh, and so important thing to acknowledge there and 
and the earlier you realize that and the earlier you take control of that, uh, the better it is uh, for your own circumstances. So how does it work? How does superannuation work? Well, there's a few different facets to it. Firstly, there, well, there's two sides really. There's contributions and then there's withdrawals. So your employer puts in 9%. You can put some money in yourself as well. And the government sometimes puts some money into the superannuation bucket uh, as well. And generally that's in the form of a government co-contribution. We'll get into that in a little more detail. So they're all your sources of, um, uh, sources of contributions to your super fund. And this bucket here representing your superannuation. Hopefully this... Um, Invest, the investments within your superannuation will continue to grow, so your tree will continue to grow. But there are some, some leaks out of the super bucket, and they are taxes. So when you're in the accumulation phase, or the phase where you're putting money into super, uh, taxes are at 15% on earnings, and there are some contributions taxes that you pay of 15%. So that's a, that's a drip coming out of the super bucket. The other one is insurance premiums, and the other one is uh, fees. So if you can reduce your taxes, your insurance premiums and your fees um, and in any investment losses, so the, the value of your invest, invest, investments going down, then you're plugging leaks in the super bucket and you're maintaining as much growth as possible uh, in your super. And so what's the benefit of super? Well, eventually you can withdraw it and you can withdraw it in two different forms. One is in the form of a pension or regular payments to yourself. Uh, to fund your retirement or, or semi-retirement uh, or pre-retirement as well, actually, as we'll find out later on in the pre presentation. And then, uh, secondly, you can draw lump sums from it as well. So there, that's the real benefit for you. And you can draw lump sums for any purpose, really. Uh, but you could use it to pay down your mortgage. You could use it to you know, buy a new car, take a trip overseas or do any other, you know, worldwide travel. So uh, that's generally how the, simply, how the superannuation structure works. Now, why use superannuation to save for retirement? It's a good question. And really it comes down to, uh, this slide hasn't come out particularly well because we've cut off a few uh, segments here. But basically this represents the your marginal tax rate. So across the top here we have... Uh, the, the range of investment structures that are available to you. So you can invest in, if, if you've got a lump of money that you want to invest, you could invest that in your own name. You could invest it in joint names. You could in invest it in a trust, a company, uh, or in superannuation. And supers, as I mentioned earlier, divide into two phases. One's the accumulation phase, and one's the pension phase. There are a few other structures that are probably worth just mentioning as well at this stage that I haven't included in this map because they're probably more niche type strategies. And one of them is the first home savers account. And that's for those people that haven't uh, bought their bought their first home or haven't lived in a home that they've owned, but haven't lived in a property that they've owned before. So there's some intricacies to that rule that may perhaps mean that some people in pastoral positions that have uh, had their housing provided for over, a, um, you know, most of their lives um, through a manse or, or etc. Uh, they could potentially use the first home savers account in some circumstances. There's insurance bonds, or they're called insurance bonds, but you could also call them investment bonds. They're another structure that can be potentially uh, valuable. And uh, there's also, uh, you know, a couple of other structures that. Oh, the other one is education. Um, bonds as well. There's there's those three other structures that are outside of here that could potentially be available to you as well. Uh, but if you've got a lump of money and you want to invest it and you invest it in your own name and you earn over $37,000 then um, or you earn between thirty-seven and $80,000 then if that investment earns income say for example it's $100,000 and it earns 10% income or $10,000, you're going to lose 30% of that $10,000 or $3,000 of the of the 10 in earnings in in tax. Uh, so the alternative is to in potentially invest in joint names um, and then you can split it two ways. But if you're both on that sort of tax rate, then um, you're both going to pay tax at at that rate. So if one's got a lesser tax rate, then you can potentially invest in the lower income earner's name. Uh, trusts allow you to distribute 
um, uh, if, if, say, for example, you put the $100,000 in a trust, you're able to distribute that $10,000 in earnings to children and other beneficiaries and, and yourselves or lower income earning spouses um, so that you can take make the most of everyone's marginal tax rates, these marginal tax rates over here. Uh, but there's also some cost associated with it uh, as well, sometimes minor costs. But, uh, and the other thing is you can distribute to churches as well. So if you wanted to do your giving, you can distribute that through a, uh, through a trust prior to to tax. Uh, you can invest through a company, but generally it's a, fa- a flat 30% tax rate, so we don't generally recommend that. And the other option is to invest via uh, superannuation, and as I mentioned, there's 15% tax on earnings within the accumulation phase. So if you look at that $100,000 example and, they, and the investment earned 10% or $10,000, then if you're comparing it to the 30% tax rate in your own name, uh, then you're saving, you know, uh, for that ten thousand dollars with the Medicare levy included, it's sixteen hundred and fifty dollars in tax that you're saving by in- investing that money in super rather than uh, in your own name. But this is where it becomes attractive is when you move to pension phase, and we'll talk about when you can actually move to pension phase. There's a zero percent tax both on income and capital gains, so. Basically, what we're saying is that to it's great to have your retirement assets in this pension phase of superannuation uh, for, for retirement. Um, the I guess the balancing act is that if you're a younger person and have many years before you can actually access your superannuation, uh, then you need to consider uh, whether it's appropriate uh, for you to put too much money into the super environment because you won't be able to touch it for many years. For many years, well, if you're if you're below thirty, then at the moment, uh, then it will be you know until not until you're sixty or thirty years away that you'll be able to access your superannuation money. But if you're approaching retirement, uh, then it's a great time. Um, it's a it's a great opportunity to store your superannuation assets there. I just had a question there from Stephen. Um, uh, are after tax contributions still taxed at fifteen percent? Yeah, great question, Stephen. And uh, yes, they are. Um, they are taxed at fifteen percent. So, uh, say for example, your employer puts in fifteen percent. Con- uh, sorry, nine percent of your income into your super fund as a an employer contribution. Fifteen percent of that contribution is is uh, deducted as contributions tax. And then the remaining amount goes into your superannuation fund and earns interest. And then 15% of the interest is taxed at 15% until you get it into this pension phase of superannuation.